Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares. We got two special, very special guests here tonight. Superstars of heavy metal. Kurt Vanderhoof, guitarist and founding member of Metal Church. Todd Latore, lead vocalist with Queensryche. Welcome, gents. Thank you. Great to be here. Who we got tonight? Rob Lasante is in the house. Craig Kaminsky is our center square tonight. Jamie Laszlo is here today. Uh, three special guests. Three special guests. <laughs> Jamie Laszlo from the Review Crew in the Monsters Den. Count Ralphus is here, Ralph Tambora. And the owner of Rock Fantasy in Middletown, New York, Steve Keeler, is here as well. Hey, awesome. hey how's Welcome, everybody gentlemen. doing? Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. Very happy to have both of you on. You both have been very special guests of Jamie's Review Crew show in recent weeks. Yeah. You're well, we're going to get you all on here Great. for this very cool album war tonight. Oh, Todd, show off the shirt. Come on, show it I off. was just going to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, look yeah. at that. This is a nice shirt. It's soft. And, I, you know, it's funny. I might have to do a white Rejoice in the Suffering shirt now. I Most know. people say yeah, we want a white one like your album cover. And I'm like, white's not going to sell. People want black. But I don't know, dude. This is awesome. I'll be, I'm will be. i going to bring this on the tour. I'll, you'll see this on stage. But I love this shirt. I have another one. So thank you for sending me uh, these two cool shirts. You're very welcome. I'm going to have to do the same for Mr. Kurt over there very, very soon. So Kurt yes, will be we have hopefully on tour with Metal Church, sporting the Sea of Tranquility shirt as well. So Absolutely. All right, the albums that are battling today for maybe, uh, I don't know if we call these mid-tier. These are not big, huge bands, but these are all pretty impactful albums from the 70s in the uh, proto-metal, heavy metal, hard rock kind of style of music. We've got the self-titled debut from Montrose, one of our combatants. We've got a very controversial album cover, but uh, Scorpion's Virgin Killer from Germany. From Scotland, and I pulled the damn wrong album. Hold on, I'll grab the right one here. Uh, <laughs> let's go to let's go to Wales. Uh, Budgie, never turn your back on a friend. I pulled the damn wrong Nazareth album. Hold on, get it. that's a hell of a collection. Holy cow! <laughs> that's that a sample. Insane. I got it all, guys. I got it all. Here we go. Hair of the dog by Nazareth. All right, from Scotland. So we got Wales, Scotland, Germany, and the U.S. represented today. Uh, as we normally do, uh, we for those of us who know these albums really, really well, we have to rank them as we like them from four to one. If uh, maybe we're kind of new to some of these, we got to go listen to them, figure out what we like about them, what we don't, and rank them. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to have our guests go first today. Kurt Vanderhoof, kick us off with your four, three, two, and one. How do you rank these? Okay. Number four for me would be because I wasn't, I missed those guys, missed them at the time. I kind of later in the 90s became more familiar with them. When I did start digging into them, I was like, oh, okay, I see the influence that they had, but I kind of missed them. And then when I've been listening to them, kind of like, eh, I really, really like them, but they're not a top five. They'd be budgie for me, number four. But having said that, I listened to some of the, went through this record again, and it was like, there's some monster riffs in this record just monsters so i have to give him kudos to that for that so uh but that would be me because again i kind of missed it missed him i just because i look back at the 70s for me and there was so much going on musically that you didn't have the time or the money to pay attention to everything you know at least that was for me so and okay so number three was a difficult one so i had to kind of look back over the years and figure out which i listened to the most and of the of these two between uh virgin killer and hair of the dog i found that i listened to uh hair of the dog way more often than i listened to uh virgin killer scorpion so i listen to nazareth a bunch more so my number three is going to be virgin killer but that's i mean that's not by no means you know that's uh i mean it's a it's a monster record you just look at the tracks on it and it's you know, especially if you listen to Tokyo tapes and all that stuff, a lot of the stuff is off that record. It's just, it's, it's incredible. So, um, so number two is Hair of the Dog. I mean, there is, uh, I mean, that's just a great record. We even covered, uh, please don't Judas me on one of our records, you know? And so, um, I mean, I love that. I still listen to that record. I listened to a lot of Nazareth. I went back in their catalog and, 
got into more stuff back, you know, that, that I didn't have no even know about. It and I love like that. 40 records, right? So yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, like, oh man. But, but uh, Dan Cafferty's voice, I mean, you, you don't, I mean, you're born with that voice. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. You know, I was really bummed when he passed away, but I mean, love that record. But my uh, number one, obviously is one of, I feel one of the best records, rock records ever made period hands down nobody's touched it they couldn't even touch it again the uh, first montrose record i mean that was a huge influence on me and i've even started a band that trying to emulate that the hall of flame stuff is all based on like the first montrose record you know still trying to capture that you know i mean i just i listen to that record regularly to this day and uh I remember here listening to it when it came out as a kid, trying to figure out what was that guitar sound, you know, back then. Now I kind of know, but I mean, it just did so many things. There's just so many iconic drum breaks and guitar riffs and yeah. Hagar's voice. I mean, it was just like, it was just, it first Montrose record, one of the top five records of all time to me. So. All right. We're off to the races here. Montrose takes the early lead. Todd, what do you think about these four records? All right. So I, I will just let your audience know, we already had a chat about this, that I didn't know the full album. These full albums, I had heard pieces and songs off of these records. You know, there were some big hits on this stuff. But as a as an entire record, um, I just didn't really know these. Sorry, guys. Um I was born in 1974, so some of this stuff. Child. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, look, I will say this. Aside of like the 80s, which is I just absolutely love. It's where my heart is. Um, the 70s is equally rivals my love for, for a decade is the singer-songwriter era of the 70s. I love that. I think there was more space in a lot of the music. I mean, I'm a huge Steely Dan fan and I love all Kurt and I were talking the other day. I love all the yacht rock. So everything you can name that's yacht rock is my, I love that stuff. I really love the bass playing on all of these records that we're talking about. And you can really hear there's, I don't know, there's just that special sound of recordings from this time, right? The the early to mid 70s. I know the Scorpions was in 1976. I think there's a, a 73 album in here somewhere. You guys would know better than me, but Montrose, Montrose. but I, I will start with um with my and I, and I hate to say least favorite, but it's my least in the rankings is is the same as as Kurt, which was the band Budgie. When I listened to it. I'll be honest, I just, I couldn't dig the vocals. It just, there's something, maybe it's his tone. I don't know. It just, there's just something about it that kind of just wore on me after a little while. And I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to dig this as an entire, like I would never want to listen to that whole thing just because of the vocal. Um, I thought musically it was really great. It had some psychedelic aspects in my opinion that I almost hear like the late, like a mid to late sixties presence, which probably makes sense. I don't know when, when was this record put out? 73, 73 I think, or 73. Something. Okay. So, so let's say that their mindset is still coming out of the sixties and they're formulating these songs. There's, there are some psychic, what I would consider some psychedelic aspects. Um, I thought it, that, because I had first listened to the Montrose record, and then I, when I when you said to go over these albums, and then when I put Budgie on, I heard what I would consider more dynamics. Like I heard these breakdowns and these really clean guitar parts that I wasn't hearing the same way in the, the Montrose stuff. So part of my notes say that it has nice dynamics musically with some nice peaks and valleys. I really like the clean guitar parts. And I believe it's the last song on the record. It's like really long. Parents. They have like a, a long song at the end. I don't even know the name of it. I yeah. really like yeah. that. And out of all of the songs, that was probably my favorite on the whole album. So I really appreciated the space and the clean guitar where it took me into this kind of, 
I don't know, trippy space, which I really, I did like that. So that's Yeah, my number four. it's some it's some good insight there. They on a lot of their earlier albums, they generally speaking have like a lot of variety. Like they'll have like, let's say there's seven or eight songs on the album. They'll have like four like sledgehammer metal songs, Okay, okay. and they'll do like a lengthy kind of proggy psychedelic, folky thing like the Okay. parent song, and then they'll do like a little bluesy boogie thing, and then they'll do Okay. some. Every album has that weird mix of stuff like that, which I think is pretty. Well, It's got some nice variety. that's great. Well, Yeah. and as someone that doesn't really know their their music or their catalog or whatever, uh, that's cool to hear that from you because then it sounds like I was kind of on with the psychedelic part and the. It, it did have variety. I'll I'll say it had variety, so that was nice. Um, Kurt's gonna kill me, and I'm so sorry, but but I have number three is Montrose. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, there's no accounting for some people's taste. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might I say that with still love. in the land. So, so look, I mean, I think most people just love Sammy Hagar's voice. It's it's so strong and powerful. But when I listen to other things, you know, it's kind of his vocal style is so powerful sounding and maybe forceful. I don't know if that's the right word that it kind of got a little linear to me. I'll be honest. It got a little linear. If you, if I'm in the right headspace, a banger of a record. Okay. But in my own listening, I mean, I like to hear some other vocalizations and some other things. And the music did, um, you could hear like a blues foundation in, in the riffs, but they were still very like, they were, I, I would have to say they were heavy for that time. Cause it's very driving and heavy, but there's like some shuffle stuff. There's there, there was a lot going on. Um, and I think that that was probably very hard rock for that time. I think it's still hard rock today, but for 19, what year was this? Okay. So for 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73, 73
we're going to do whatever the hell we feel like it. And it didn't like song structure and what we're so like kind of expected to do nowadays with the formula. You just don't hear it on, 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 on really any of these records. And that's what I loved about this era and, and Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. And like, if you wrote a song today that was anything like that, people are just like, God, this is going on forever. Unless you have this very <laughs> specific group of people that just love these epic, long 10, 12 minute songs or whatever it is. Yeah. So I liked that experimental free form. I mean, it had structure, but there's something in the playing and the sounds that just have this experimental quality. I put that I really like the song Crying Days and maybe the best one on the album to me has interesting dark tension chords in that song that I, I thought were really interesting. And I don't know how much it, it like when, when you'll play uh, a, it could be a chord or just like two strings where they kind of rub, they work, but they rub against each other and they give this haunting tension uh, aspect to, to the song. I don't think I ever even heard that before when I heard it on here, I hear it a lot today in metal, but when I heard that, I was like, wow, I don't, recall ever hearing anything like this on other music from the old days that I can recall like it really stood out to me because it's stuff that I love when I'm trying to write songs um I go for these for these tensiony things that sound evil and creepy and and they're they're very interesting so anyway scorpions virgin killer that's my number two obviously my number one is nazareth it's just so fucking good dude yeah. <laughs> I mean the vocals are just on another level. I'm sorry. They are. This is man just the man. It's totally it's I mean, I don't know the names of all the songs, but there was some stuff that was like I probably wouldn't write because it's almost so too simple and I but I find myself purposefully when I'm writing my my new record trying to keep things much more simple. And I love heavy thrash with all kinds of cool stuff. But then I thought to myself, you know, some of the, my favorite songs are just not complex. There's not a whole lot going on. And boom, these vocals kicked in. And honestly, man, like I don't listen to Nazareth. This totally makes me want to go back and rediscover the band all over again. Mm -hmm. Because I, I mean... He's just not a guy that pops into my mind probably because of my age. But this guy is just so awesome. And he just takes every song to, a, he, you know, like I always loved CCR. And when I hear the vocals, even though it has that, that twangy Southern, you <laughs> know, uh, when I was just a little boy, you know, <laughs> da -da 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 he's kind of like a, the South Dio. Like he, you know, the, the passion and the grit and the vibrato and the, it's so, it's very metal. Like, you know, you listen to those vocals on that old CCR stuff and it's, it's just super heavy metal to me. So mm -hmm. Nazareth takes the cake. I, I almost feel like, when I listen to the phrasing and the way he sings, it's like a mesh of like Priest and ACDC uh, before they had probably more of the defined sound that we know them to have. Um, a Rose in the Heather, which is an instrumental I loved. It had a very Zeppelin vibe musically, which I appreciated. Um, it's The music also is bluesy. There's a foundation in blues there, but the vocals again, take it a bit out of that box uh, for me and just make it just driving. Uh, it just takes it to the next level. The music was simpler, in my opinion. Very spacious songs that breathe. And then my last note on this is uh, the song Please Don't Judas Me is uh, one of my favorites on the record by far. I, I don't hear songwriting like like this stuff anymore. Um, yeah. it, it, it's it's almost like a lost. Uh, I guess you have to reach a certain musical maturity before you can really appreciate that it's harder uh, 
to it's harder to have space in music than it is to cram a bunch of notes in in a bar. It's uh, harder to write something simple than it is to write something complicated. It's it is because we think harder. that you think that it needs more because there's it's it's a it's a blank canvas and it's like well here's a space I should probably do something there and you're like no and I always go back to and then I'll we'll pass the torch I always go back to like back in black okay so if you take a song like that it's you know and then it, the the riff the kick drum isn't going do 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's what so many people would do today. It's like just cut that drummer's left leg off on that second bass drum. It's simple and, and you know, babs, babs, badum, gaga, boom. You don't hear crash cymbals everywhere. And a lot of that 70s stuff, you you, you go, wow, he didn't hit a crash cymbal there. And the downbeat on the next one. You're expecting the big crash doesn't happen. And I swear it's bigger. And for anybody that's that's written music and been at a mixing board and you're listening to everything and, and you know everything that you did and you start pulling that fader out, pulling that fader out, pulling this one down a little and start tucking things. And all of a sudden the music just gets bigger with less. So despite what Ingve says, less is more. Um, you know exactly you know it, it really is and so i think that a lot of this stuff um in all of these all of these bands all of these records there are moments where you really get to appreciate that space and take it in you know it breathes i mean it, it's so important i i wish uh, I'm kind of glad that more bands don't do it now because it's going to make my shit sound better. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, don't give away the secret. No, no. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so that's my list. Um, I really did enjoy, guys, I did enjoy going through these records because I don't listen to a lot of music a lot of times much because my ears just, uh, they're fatigued. I have sensory overload. Overload. And I kind of rest on the stuff that I've always loved. And so I I, I really like this opportunity. It forced me to listen to something that, in all honesty, I probably never would have. I just, it wouldn't have crossed my radar. I've never, I never would have put on Budgie or even listened to that old Nazareth. If I'm in the car and it plays, you know, Love Hurts or something, okay. But going through these other songs and the Montrose stuff was like, wow, I, I need to, I need, I deserve and the music deserves to be rediscovered and so i'm glad that that music exists and i'll probably learn something for learn things from from going back and mm -hmm. and and, and uh, taking it all in and, and help me develop as a songwriter and just listening just listening so i appreciate uh all of these records for various reasons well we're glad we awesome. can help that it's very cool Good insight there. Your work here is <laughs> done, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hey, uh, hate to eat and run. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Fuck. Now I gotta listen to the rest of these guys talk. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, be fast. we'll be fast, Todd. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, hey, you got me all night. However long this runs is what it runs. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to be here. Well, we don't have a clear winner yet. We're only two people in. So uh, right now, at Nazareth and Montrose are tied for first. Jamie Laszlo, are you going to upset uh, the apple card here? Oh, I'm going to upset a lot more than that. I'm going to upset all the viewers. <laughs> you know, you have me on sometimes, Pete, on the on Hudson Valley Squares. And I swear to God, sometimes, it, just by chance, I come on here with an unpopular opinion. And people think I make it up just to stir the pot. I don't. I'm not that kind of person. But I know a lot of people don't watch the Monsters Den, and they don't watch the review crew. So they watch me and they go, who is this fucko? And why does this opinion suck? <laughs> well, my name's Jamie Laszlo. I have a review crew show on here where I review albums. But I don't know if you're going to want to tune in after you hear my review on two of these albums. I knew what my bottom two were going to be, and I knew what my top two were going to be. I just had to put it in order. Um... I'm putting Nazareth at four because, as you said, it's very simple. 
And it's a little too simple for me. I mean, I don't mind riff and vocals, which some of these songs, you know, even though the bass and drum is there, it's kind of just riff and vocal. Even like in Changing Times where they take turns. Right? They're riff. Okay, you done? Now I sing. I'm done. Now you riff. Like, uh, this is annoying. <laughs> and, and a lot of, you know, I listen to the White Stripes, which is kind of like that. But for some reason, it's more interesting to me. Uh, Hair of the Dog, tired of it. Love Hurts. Never liked it from day one. It just kind of, you know, ponders on. Oh, oh, I know. Love hurts. Let's go. Let's get the song over with. That's how I feel with that one. Uh, Beggar's Day is eh, a little repetitive. Uh, whiskey drinking women. Woman. I think when songs get too swampy, it's a turnoff for me. I think that's what my personal issue is with that song. Uh, Please Don't Judas Me is, is cool. I don't know if it needs to be 10 minutes, though. I mean, I, I, halfway through, you're, okay, when's it going to, like, turn into the epic? Oh, it does that the whole time? Okay. So that's my, no, and, I, and I, hey, and I even own it. I mean, I got it, but not the biggest fan. My number three, I have, there's songs on this album I like. There's songs on this album I have issues with. And that is Montrose. Look, I like uh, Bad Motor Scooter is a blast. I love Sammy Hagar. I always said his voice, if, if Summer had a voice, it would sound like Sammy Hagar. But Rock the Nation, it sounds like Sammy's singing a different song than what the band is playing to me. Sounds like two different songs are going on. Space, Space Station number five is fucking awesome. I love that. I love how it gets spacey in the middle. You know, they took chances on that. Uh, I don't want it. Some of these songs are very dated, very dated and not in a good way like that. Good rocking tonight. The whole 50s rock and roll influence thing uh, really dated on that one. Rock candy. I mean, they, there's a whole record label named after that song. But to me, you know, people compare this to Van Halen. Like, a song like Rock Candy reminds me more of Grand Funk. And I don't think there is a more dated hard rock band in the history of hard rock than grand funk that's why they played to stadiums and then four years later nobody knew who they were they didn't age well and it happened fast they were like a carton of milk put it in the fridge two weeks later it's expired i do like some grand funk though but man some of that some of those songs are way dated that's i and think what? that's i think that's eddie jackson's favorite band is grand funk it's one of my favorite bands. I love them too. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to step on a lot of feet and a lot of tails. That's all right. Go ahead. Grand, grand Funk. But look, look. I'm, I'm not just. I'm not. I'm not just saying I have issues with the songs. I'm going to give you fucking reasons. Like one thing on my mind. Look, I don't mind if a band sings about juvenile things that they do. I just don't like it when the lyrics themselves sound juvenile, like the phrasing and the words that they choose. And the rhyming. I mean, look, honey, slip on your shoes, about to rock away your blues while well, I'm feeling pretty hot. And that's when I like it a lot. <laughs> we got to do it tonight while the time is so right. Everything you like, I'm going to make it right. I saw yeah, the but you know what? It gave me power. But Five Ronnie hours. James Dio would sell that like no one else. Yeah, he could... <laughs> Yeah, he could sell it better, maybe. But and then it's all done in that simple rockabilly fashion type thing. Maybe not rockabilly, but rocky rock and yeah. roll. Yeah, I'm not into that. Yeah, that rock and rolly thing, and when they do that in hard rock, is so and make make it make it last is cool. But you know, Van Halen is timeless. This, I'm sorry to say, is dying with Generation X. When we go, the band this is go. It'll be a Wikipedia page. Be forgotten. <laughs> they might as well bury a copy of this with all of us in our coffin when we die because it's dying with us. I'll oh. take one. It'll just be a little Wikipedia page, and maybe one day that'll go too. Um sorry. My next one, my next two I like. I like a lot. Uh I'm gonna go with Bungie. Um, what's the name of this damn album again? Never turn your back on a friend. Um now, this is dated kind of in a good way because Proto Metal's dated, but it's, it gives it that charm, a really cool charm. Um, 
Bread fan is great. Love the Metallica cover too. Baby, please don't go. Oh, you know, I'm torn with this song because you see that cover on an album and you're like, oh, that's kind of, that's so overdone, you know? Even before this album came out, you had them. You had the Amboy Dukes. You had 10 years after at Woodstock incorporated into uh, I'm Going Home. So even by 73, it feels like it's overdone. But I do like their cover. At the same time, I think it sounds pretty cool. So I'm torn there. Um, I like the ballads on here. You know, I always love you. I wish that song was longer. You're the biggest thing since powdered milk is so big, so cool, and so epic. If you listen to it, you never knew it would have a goofy title like that. You know, this is called like what? Killing the dragon after midnight? No, it's called you're the <laughs> biggest thing since powdered milk. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> uh, <laughs> the second half is really cool. But here's the thing with this album. I had to split hairs uh, between this and Scorpions. What? It's not even that big of a deal, but when you take this album out, it's like it makes you feel like you opened an invisible sonic closet. And, and there's mothballs and everything. And this music comes out for the first time in a while. And it doesn't feel like it belongs its era. The music's flying around going, 2024 is fucking crazy. Put me back in my 1973 closet, please. You know, it just feels like it's more at home in 1973 than 2024. Um, so it doesn't have a, a bit of that freshness to it, you know. But still, I like it a lot. Number one, the Scorps. Uh, I really like this album. I like this and Entrance. I like that those two albums when they were really starting to get that Scorpion sound. This album doesn't feel as dated to me. I feel like younger hard rock fans could listen to this and become Scorpion fans. There's a lot to like here. Uh, uh, Pictured Life is fun. Upbeat. Uh, you know, uh, Catch Your Train has grit and great guitar work, but it's still fun and catchy. And, you know, fun melody and hooks can go a long way when it's done right. And if you want, um, if you want something heavier, dirtier, and weirder on here, you have a uh, Virgin Killer, which is really heavy. Uh, Hellcat and Polar Knights, they're just weird enough to mix things up, and you know, give you that kind of that thing. And Crying Days, I think they were ahead of the game when they were writing power ballads that still that you know that were hard rock power ballads. Really ahead of the game. The Crying Day sounds like it could have been like on an 80s album, kind of. So, yeah, I'm going on with Virgin Killer. I dig it a lot. I, I always say I need to listen to more Scorpions in my life. But, you know, there's only seven days in the week and 24 hours in a day. And I got fucking 6,000 fucking albums. So it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I think yeah, your negativity on I think your negativity on the first two records was uh, interfering with your Internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Did I did I uh yeah, buffer? You, were you, were, you were a little buffering there for about 30 seconds. You know, that's okay. Did did I get all the negativity out though? Did oh you did, yeah, it was after point? that. But it was buffered by your Sonic Temple shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Got new internet too. Son of a bitch. That's what yeah. I get. That was Everybody, a great that's what you get, Laszlo. That was okay. a great review. I enjoyed that. Always entertaining. So we got uh, still a three. Now we got three yeah. wins. So there's there's no clear cut winner yet, and uh, we're gonna move on to wow. Steve Keeler and see if he will either add to one of these leads or add another leader here. Oh man, put me on the spot, man. Right. How's everybody doing tonight, Todd? It's nice to meet you on Zoom. I saw you guys on tour. You brought back the Reich in my world. Ah, awesome. thank you so much. You're very very kind. Thank you. I even, I even brought out my. I'm a real fanboy. I got the autograph. Oh, yeah, and. Love that album. So awesome. Thank you so much. Well, now I gotta go to work. Uh much like Kurt and Todd, I at least Kurt, I never really listened to Budgie too much growing up, and I'm old enough to because I'm 63, but uh I had never owned a budgie record. And so I but today I made sure I listened to this album, I listened to it several um probably three times at work 
I don't know. Bread fan, of course, I knew it was the Metallica cover. The song that stood out for me on this album is going to be Parents. And it's another weird name for a song, <laughs> I thought. But, uh, but it remi- like, if I was trying to place, like, that song sounds a lot like a song that Grand Funk did, I'm pretty sure. But I didn't come up with the title. But Budgie's definitely my number four from this bunch. I don't go into details as much as everybody else. But and my number two is Montrose. I've owned that record for many, many years. I didn't have it back in the 70s, but I uh, really think it's a great hard rock album. And Bad Motor Scooter, of course. Great song. I think they still play the heck out of that on like uh Boneyard, if you want listen to that, the same, you know. 100 rock songs they play over and over, but that one I think is on there. Rock the Nation, I think it's a solid song. And I really dug the Space Station number five song. So those were my three songs from the Montrose album because we kind of used to do that, pick three from each. The next two, uh, I own one of them on eight track tape. Uh, mm. the, the Nazareth album and that Nazareth album was absolutely huge when that came out in the States uh, I remember listening to that album and it kind of like that was back in the days with Aerosmith and everybody that was cool in high school had the Nazareth hair to do a uh, a track or record or whatever as so I went back and revisited that album today uh, I think it's just a great record. Uh, I brought back so many good memories. And I was in the store. I had uh, Mr. Dale Caldwell in the shop. Uh, maybe some of you guys know him as Digger. And he does uh, leather work. He's out at the Reddit Fair. He does uh, a lot of stage gear for bands like Dimmy Borge and Abbott and even Carrie King and stuff. So I told him my homework and what I was doing tonight. And we were listening to all. He hung out, listened to all the records with me and he was, it said, yeah, that Nazareth, all the cool kids had that back in the day. But once we've listened to the Scorpions' Virgin Killer, it's like, yeah, it's the Scorps. And Scorpions are one of my favorite bands. I like the 80s stuff. I even like the newer stuff. But, I mean, I absolutely love the 70s stuff. And kicking off with Pictured Life, Catch Your Train, I think it's a great song, Backstage Queen. Of course, the title track, everybody has talked about this quite a bit already, how heavy that is. Hellcat, it's an album I can put on and listen to over and over again. And this is the album I go to most off this list. Of course, I don't, uh, Bungie, of course, I explained, I don't listen too much. But I should probably revisit because I do dig some of that stuff. And uh, I sell some of the stuff in the store too, of course. But my number one is going to be the Scorps. And bang. I'm short and sweet. I'm quick. You're always sweet, Steve. The the good old <laughs> 70s when 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 chicks were fast and cars had chrome. <laughs> yeah. And that I was like driving I, I was driving my 74 uh 340 duster around. That's awesome. Listen to tracks. <laughs> the 70s when you could have sex. Drink and drive, and all the bands were good simultaneously. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Yeah. And you and you would drink and drive and go do burnouts in the snow. Like now, oh, you're not dude. supposed to drive. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe I lived. Oh my god! In Kurt, in Kurt's case, though, up in Seattle, he was probably doing it in puddles of water in the mud, right? Instead, of- we, <laughs> we, no, seriously, dude, we would fill the trunk up with ice and beer and hit logging roads. Just wow. doing like 60 down logging roll. I mean, just like dumb as you can be wow. drunk. We were no guardrails, completely morons. <laughs> but you know, we were 16 and immortal, and you know, yeah, we were listening to Aerosmith. I don't think so. anything's changed though, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Still doing the same thing. <laughs> Hey, Todd, I know you guys did that big tour with the Scorpions a number of years ago. I, I bet you they didn't play any of the 70s stuff in their set list on that tour, right? I don't think so. I think yeah. maybe some of the oldest stuff they paid was like blackout or something. Yeah. Yeah. 80s. You know? yeah. But yeah. No, I don't so, think they revisit the 70s stuff unless they do special shows when Uli comes out and plays with them. I don't think they probably. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, they, on did, the a, last... they, did med- they did a medley when I saw them a few yeah. years ago. They, they, they do. Uh, um, it was uh, mm-hmm. 
what was it? Catcher train, um, maybe in trance. How about Robot Man? They used to bust out Robot Man. Uh, there was a yeah, couple. Robot there, Man. there was um, another. Uh, yeah, another one from uh, Taken by Force. I can't think of. You know, they but... they may when we toured with them. Trying to think if that that was a that was an anniversary tour for them. I think that was a oh, fifty wow. year anniversary tour. And ironically, when we toured with Priest for three and a half months, that was a fiftieth fifty. I was at that one. <laughs> but but I think you know Eddie would know this better than I would. But they may have thrown a couple of those super deep. If it's a fiftieth anniversary, they may have done a little I medley, and I just maybe I just didn't know that that was like a super deep cut or something like that. But now you've got me curious to go online and try to look I, at the set list, I think but... I saw that tour uh I was it at Barclays, maybe? Yeah, we played there. And you guys opened up, yeah. And they definitely New York. they definitely hit on a two of the older tracks on that tour. Then the like the last time I saw them, they were at Madison Square Garden with Megadeth supporting them. And they That's definitely and that was with Mickey D now yeah. doing the drums and yeah they definitely do that medley but claus once said that he didn't play that stuff in the states because they never toured for those albums in the states that's yeah, what i heard him say sell once. anything here People that makes sense yeah. Yeah. i'm on setlist.fm i'm gonna look them up go ahead all right do that all right we'll, we'll move over to ralph while jamie's looking that up ralph well how do you rank these <laughs> All right, so like like a lot of years, I I only own one of these out of the four, and uh, I'm gonna go with Budgie first. Um, yeah, the vocals is what kills it for me. Um, you, you hear Bread Fan, and you you're used to hearing Metallica's version. When you hear this, it's like almost like the Chipmunks singing or something, or it sounds like he's sucking <laughs> on a helium balloon, like half the album, you know. But like the song, uh. You're you're the biggest thing since powdered milk. That song, his vocals are a lot better. It's like I like it more when he's not so nasally sounding. Um, the music is great throughout it all. I could hear how why they're like it inspired a lot of heavier bands later. They definitely were heavy for a time. Yeah. It's the vocals. It's the only thing that I really had a problem with. And uh, there was a couple songs that uh, like the writing my nightmare. I thought was boring. Um, and you know, I'll always love you. I thought that was super lame, but uh, the rest of it I thought was good music wise, and a couple songs, even with the vocals, were good. Then, uh, when it comes to my number three and four, or no, the two and three, that's where I had the hardest time choosing between these two. But um, I'm gonna have to say Scorpions, um, mainly because that that original cover was so awful. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised Pete had the the real cover for it because you you never really it's see silhouette that anymore, though. But, uh, yeah, it's a box set, so it's in kind of like. Uh, oh, yeah. you have the original. Yeah. Co yeah, the cover they put they put. Oh, that's not up. the original original. No, but still, I had the original one back in back. In oh the, yeah, yeah. I think I still own ones. Uh, I don't have with my, the with the na name of the album being called Virgin Killer, uh, with that cover. I mean, they they say uh, they claim that the title's about time being the killer of innocence, but uh, I don't know with that cover. It's just a, it's a was, she, hey, was she was she wearing them, a watch? But, uh... <laughs> maybe, she, maybe she was wearing a watch. <laughs> I think she actually was wearing a watch. Yeah, it's hard to see. Yeah. Well, Whatever. <laughs> there's, a, the, there's a lot of great songs though on this album, and it's the, it's the, the most metal sounding album of them all. Uh, Pictured Life is a good song. Great guitars throughout the whole album. Catch Your Train is another cool one. In Your Park um, has great leads, but uh, I thought the song was kind of slow and boring, and I think the lyrics are dumb. Uh, I think Todd was the one who say he liked that song a lot. But uh, back, uh, Backstage Queen's a great one. Uh, the song Virgin Killer, the title track, I think is one of, one, probably the heaviest song out of all of these albums. Um, Hellcat was a uh, cool music, but uh, it has that weird rapish part to it, and it almost it doesn't even sound like it's Claw singing. Yeah, it's, Crying it's, Days it's, was cool. Like yeah, you. Oh, singing. he's singing that. Okay, yeah. I thought yeah, it he just, sounds. He doesn't have a really good voice. Like anything. 
Polar Knights was uh, another cool one. Uh, that Yellow Raven, oh no, Yellow Raven, take me away from here. I, again, with I think uh, Scorpions always suffered from bad lyrics for me. But uh, I think it lost in the so, all right. Then going over to Nazareth, um, the thing with Nazareth is I never owned this album, but I wish I would have got it first. It, this is one of those bands I wanted to get something first, so I bought this three. Uh, it's like a three disc set. And it's the best of. It's got like fifty songs, and uh, so you think you're getting every like greatest hits and everything. But uh, on this thing, I only like like fifteen percent of it. I didn't really like it. There, there's a couple songs that I recognized why I wanted to buy something by them, but then listening to Hair of the Dog in its entirety, I thought it was great. You know, um, I for one too, I like this album cover. It's the best out of all these album covers, and, and the Budgie album cover. Um, I thought it was horrible. Like it, it, like I liked the concept that they had, but I thought the artwork sucked. But I always, I always hated Roger Dean, who did all the yes, al- did all the yes albums. Yeah, I know. Did he but care of the dog too? It no, looks, no, he it just looks did so. Oh, Sim- okay. looks similar though, right? It looks yeah. kind of yeah. Yeah, the the logo is awesome. I always like the Budgie logo, but I I, I didn't like uh the, the way that the that album cover came out. But I thought the Nazareth album cover was really cool. Um, let's see. Uh, please don't Judas me is really cool. Uh, Dan had a great voice, really powerful throughout the whole time. Um, the title track kicks ass. That's that's a song that you know I hear on the radio all the time that made me want to like investigate them more. Miss Miss Misery was a great one. Beggar's Day, another great one. Whiskey Drinking Woman's bluesy, but it was still pretty cool. Uh, Guilty is a slow and boring one. That's the one I would skip on this. And, uh, oh yeah, but I was, yeah. So, um, love hurts. is like, um, it sounds like it, you know, it's a classic rock radio staple, but it reminds me of all the hair metal bands that tried to do the power ballads later in the eighties. So I kind of hated it. Like, it sounds like a power ballad from the eighties, but, um, but yeah, this is a really good album. And, uh, then my number one, I'm going with Montrose. It's the only one that I owned. Wow. And like uh, Jamie was saying that uh, uh, Sammy was like the 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 voice of summer. I always think of like Van Halen as the the band of summer, and that's yeah. how I feel about this album. It's produced by Ted Templeman, who did all the early Van Halen stuff, and it has like that that feeling like it's just a fun partying album. I could picture like hanging out drinking back in the day. I hate this album cover though. It's like yeah, it's I could picture them sitting That's really around. Saying, bad. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, don't put your clothes on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we're not doing that. No. <laughs> Freeze. Hey, real quick, I want to just say something. Um I think Ralph froze. Yeah, I think he is frozen. Um, he had mentioned about, you know, in, in the most eloquent way possible, the, the lyrics are dumb. Um <laughs> One one thing is when we um we were doing shows with Accept and Peter uh, Baltas he told me that because they were German and they just didn't uh, know the language well that when they wrote that early early Accept stuff they used an encyclopedia and that's how they wrote lyrics was out of the encyclopedia so he's like you know we've just coming up with whatever we could out of the encyclopedia. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. So that's why they sound kind of funny. Like words are in the wrong place. Kind of. If you, if yeah. you put yourself in that headspace and you go, Hey, I mean, nobody would want to hear how I would construct something in German it would be <laughs> awful. So, you know, <laughs> that not being their native tongue. Um, you gotta still, it, yeah. yeah. Like I, I mean, um, we're, 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 you know, being American and everything's in English. We just take that for granted. But could you imagine being a band that had to do everything in another language that's not even yours? Mm-hmm. That's a that in and of itself is a really tall order. So well, I just I, imagine I, if we had to write our songs and, and we had to sing in German. Oh I mean, God. I would just be I quit. Yeah, I we would sound it. really angry, but that would be hard. <laughs> um. Exactly. It'd be our, tough, man. So you had to hand it to him for that, you know. For even, sure. Did did he know. come back? Is he? He's no, I, I think because he put the scorpions in third place, he was. Uh, Pete hit the eject <laughs> button. Maybe out. I don't know. I hit the eject button. <laughs> or, call, call, 
<laughs> Maybe Claus Mine uh, is our special guest and he hit the eject button. So that's <laughs> why I thought <laughs> <laughs> so hey so pete where are we at now because that changed things yeah so that changed things so we have scorpions and mantras tied wow two two votes apiece two, yeah, this is close apiece. i mean usually when we do these album wars there's usually always one that kind of pulls away about halfway Sometimes, through yeah. that's not yeah. happening yet today so well, it was a good yeah. selection then yeah so you yeah got three, was... so you got three votes left right pete uh we get three votes left yeah so hey, uh, real right. quick well real quick while i have it up Top of the, the melody mentally that Scorpions did. Top of the bill, Steam Rock Fever, Speedy's Coming, Catch Your Train. That yeah. was those are four good ones. Yeah. And when when was fun. that? When was that, Jamie? 2017. So okay. that I think we toured with them then too. Yeah, we did. Because mm -hmm. we did a, a bunch of stuff and then we did a whole residency with them. Then we did a whole nother. In fact, when you mentioned Megadeth, there was well, I'm not gonna say what happened, but there was an opening, and so we ended up filling in seven yep. more shows that were part of that tour that Megadeth was on the Scorps with. So we ended up getting a call and finishing out some dates that uh, hadn't happened. So maybe mm -hmm. that, I think that was when that happened, Jamie, that you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I can remember like Queen's Reich with Scorpions a couple times. Even yeah. further back, maybe even before you were with the band, I remember. I mean, probably. Yeah, yeah. Scorpions have a Queen's right then. open up, man. Yeah. Who's cool. next? All right, Craig. Oh, Ralph's back. Ralph's back. Ralph's back. <laughs> Let's see. I Ralph's thought you'd back. moved on already. I don't know where I left off, but uh, that's pretty much it. I just had to have your screen on. We don't see you, Ralph. Oh, jeez. <laughs> You're in the dark. He got kicked <laughs> off for not hey, having hey, scorpions, hey. number one. <laughs> yeah, so yeah the, that was pretty much it. You know, I went Montrose number one. I don't know where I got cut off, but uh yeah, that was that was pretty much it though. I just just go with Montrose has a great flow to it, great guitar tone throughout the whole album. And uh this uh, there's nothing that I really would skip. Everything is like worth listening to. So right I was on. telling everybody, Ralph, that uh, Scorpions and Montrose are now tied for first place with two votes apiece, and we have three of us left. So, uh, Craig, are you going to upset the apple cart here? I might. Um, first, I just want to say, uh, to mirror along with what uh, Steve had said, uh, Todd, I saw uh, Queensryche for the, for the first time with you uh, at the helm and uh, on May 1st at the Keswick Theater in Glenside, Pennsylvania, and I thought you guys were awesome. Great time at the show. And Kurt... Last year, uh, June 30th, I saw Metal Church for the first time, and you guys burned the house down in <laughs> at uh, Reverb in Reading, Pennsylvania. Oh right! And, oh yeah. Uh, just a, and I just want to say that the opening one-two punch of "Ton of Bricks" and "Start the Fire" is just so <laughs> awesome to hear live. Right on. And so I was, uh, you know, very pleased, uh, you know, to hear you awesome. guys uh, and see you guys for the first time. So oh, that thank was, you very much. I appreciate awesome. that. That's, that's and also, true. And, and also to go back to what we were saying before we went live, I mean, uh, Todd, you're somewhere in Florida. I would appreciate if you did a uh, wellness check in to my mom uh to just, just you know see if she's all right i mean actually i know she's all right i just want to get the phone call from her to say some long-haired guy came to my door you know mm -hmm. knocking on it and wanted to see how i was and so i, I just if you I, if I, you give me her address i promise I, I will, you i, I will, will knock on you. the door and say i'm friends with your son this and would he be wanted the to make sure that be, you were this good. This would be like my Christmas gift early if you did that, because I would love the phone call from her. Some guy, some long-haired guy came to my door, and I don't know who the fuck that was. And, you know, <laughs> I would do it. He said Give he knew you. Give me the address. I'll go you there You do tomorrow. that goddamn podcast, and now all these people are there. So, <laughs> anyway, so, that was, so uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way. So. Uh, my number four, uh, I, I like all these albums in different in different levels, but, you know, somebody's got to come in fourth. So for me, uh, I put Budgie at number four. I do uh, I do like a, a good chunk of the songs on this and uh, Red Fan uh, in the in the grip of a uh, tire fitter's hand. I like uh, you're the best thing since powder, powdered milk. I like. But the, um I, I don't need another cover of uh, Baby uh, Baby Please Don't Go after I've heard, after I know the ACDC cover so well I, I I don't need to hear you know and the uh, Uncle Ted version you know I don't I don't need to hear you know another one really of that 
But uh, and I freely admit I never heard of Budgie until Metallica covered uh, Crash Course in Brain Surgery in 1987. I I never saw one of their albums. Uh, any it, maybe in the shops that I would frequent as a kid, never heard the certainly never heard the name before. That name would stick in your head if you know hearing a band name of that title. So they just were not something that I uh, not a band that I heard of uh, until Metallica. Uh, you know, uh, covered them. So, uh, and I, and I, I like their, their, the versions that they did, uh, very much, but I've got, got Budgie at number four. So my number three, I went with uh, Virgin killer as, as my number three. And I do, I, I love this album. I really do. But the, the, what I, why I have this be just in the, in the midst of these numbers here, there's nine songs and three of them for me are sleepy time songs. So I don't, you know, it's just those there's, you know, three that just don't hold my attention as much, but the rockers on this are so good that it, it uh, elevates it uh, that much more for me. I mean, catch your train is such a great song and, and obviously, you know, what more needs to be said of Uli's lead playing on, on all the songs, just yeah. phenomenal, especially, you know, for people who maybe are only familiar with their more popular stuff from the eighties. Um, you know, if you go back and listen to this, it's almost like a different band. But uh, Backstage Queen is one of my favorite songs by them uh, uh, of, of all time. And uh, Virgin Killer, the title track, I love. And, and I remember that when I bought this, putting I probably played, played it in the car and listening to Hellcat for the first time, never having heard that before. And it was one of those, you hear that riff and you went like, you know, it's like, wow what that is the that is such a cool riff where it's like you know it's like like a dog putting its head sideways you know and it's like you know and i was like wow whoo that's that's really cool that's you know i mean yeah his vocals aren't aren't the best but the song is just it is just so cool when you hear when you hear that riff in the beginning and everything and uh same same with polar nights it's just this this uh bizarre sounding song but yet it's got uh it's got its appeal that that uh that I very much enjoy. So that that one comes in at my uh at my number 3. Uh my number 2 these are these are tough for me but uh for my number 2 I went with Nazareth. Uh love this album and this was one of the uh last year uh or last year I guess it was Pete had a monthly series of or maybe it was 2 years ago of uh perfect album sides. He and I did an episode and I picked side 1 uh, of uh Hair the Dog as a perfect side and I still stick by that. You know, but of those of those four songs, I mean the, I I like I love side 2 as well. But the title track Hair the Dog, the one that is the song that even for people who have never heard the name Nazareth, you play you 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 play that song and it'd be like, oh, OK, I know that one. Just such a such a great song. Uh, and Miss Misery, just I don't, it is simple, but it, uh, it is just so awesome. And that song, along with actually every song on the album. The lyrics are are some of the most caustic and acidic lyrics that that you that I that you can hear that you can hear. Every song is about how a woman has wronged you in some <laughs> way. All every single song uh, on that album, and uh, you know, Miss Misery with you know when you came into my life, it's the same old situation. You know, I mean, just you know, just empty days and lonely nights. I mean, it's just his and his voices, just you know, can just tear through steel yes. but then he but then he, he can also sing a tender ballad like like love hurts and which which and do it so well now and love hurts i i freely admit i did not not really like that or appreciate that when i was younger and i've come to i've come to enjoy and appreciate it because of uh just how well it's done and also if you ever listen to the original version of that done by the Everly Brothers, they really took that song and made it their own. The Everly Brothers version has, has you know, same words, completely different tempo, and it's a faster song. And the way that Dan enunciates the words and puts different emphasis on on the words it drives it home so much more when he says like i know it isn't true 
I know it isn't true. Love is just a lie. I mean, it's like he, he when he yeah. emphasizes that, when you hear the original, it's at, at the speed it's going, it's like, I know it isn't true. I know it isn't true. Love is just a lie. No, it, it, it goes true. like that. But when yeah. you drive it home with those, you know, with, with the way that he's, sledging those those words even though it's a ballad it's like you know you hear you, you hear you hear that you hear pain yeah when you get to the end you're like god damn it love hurts you know like dream like, on right dream know. on that's like a rival to dream on mm -hmm. yeah i mean you believe though, you even, believe him yeah. Yeah, yeah even though it's a even though it's a cover but they took it and they just they make it their own yes uh, so uh so much change in time do that and, more often and, too. and change in times is is probably my one or one or two favorite songs of, of, of the entire nazareth catalog just with uh you know um and again with the just the, the driving beat with that and again the lyrics where it's uh uh you know Treat, uh, treat, uh, treat, uh, treat a woman like uh, got to act like a man. Mama told me that that's the way it should be, but I think Mama done lied to me. You know, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just, uh, just such a wonderful song, and I and I love it. But I had to go with, you know, for out of these four, I had to go with Montrose as my number one because for me, it's you know, there's eight songs and this is all lean and no fat uh, for me, in, in, in my opinion. I mean, just every song is is great and and fun. You know, it's just good. You know, there's nothing, nothing soft on it at all. There, yeah, you know, that you got your good rocking tonight is, you know, is probably the only cover, on, you know, on here, I believe uh, all the other ones are original. And still to this day, I mean, 50, at least for me, 51 years later, I still think this is the best thing that Sammy Hagar has lent his voice to, in, mm -hmm. in my opinion. You know, as, oh, yeah. as a young 25-year-old uh, or so, I would reach for this over any of his other solo or certainly any of his, uh, you know, Van Halen material or, wow. you know, Chicken Feet or the Circle chicken Jerks, feet. whatever any of the other stuff that, you know, that, that he's done. You know, so, I mean, I... <laughs> Uh, you know this this Montrose album is just you know I mean what better example of of seventies rock you know hearing in Steve Keeler's seventy four Duster rock candy blasting out you mm -hmm. know I mean ah. who I mean ah. that is just the per yeah. that is just the perfect seventies rock song yeah. you know that you the you know you hear that. Yeah, some of the lyrics are a little juvenile, but they were young guys when he when he wrote this. So yeah. you know, and it and it's still fun to listen to that today, and and it makes you feel, uh, just makes you feel good, makes you feel young once you put put the top down or you know crack open a beer or whatever. So out of these four, Montrose is is definitely my uh, top of the heap. So that 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 uh, changed that swung the scale. Yes. So Montrose yeah. takes the lead. Rob, it's up to you and me, baby. What are we going to do here? Well, okay. So <laughs> my first pick, number four, is going to be uh, Budgie. Now, for me, like Kurt was talking about in the beginning, I never really, I mean, I knew of them. I have older friends. That's how I got to a lot of music was older guys back in the 70s. You know, they got me to a lot of music. But for some reason, as everybody's been talking about, um, I think the guy's voice turned me off in this band. I, I was not into it, but I do like the music, as somebody else said. I like a lot of the music. I love that last jam. Somebody else mentioned Parents. I thought that was a great jam. Uh, I like the, uh, in the grip, I like that funky kind of jam going on. Uh, I and like uh, Craig just said, baby, please don't go. I don't need to hear that again as a remake, you know. So this is my number four. I'm not going to go too long. Now, Nazareth for me. I was 13 when this came out, and I remember buying this album because I love the cover. Now, I don't like Love Hurts. I'm sorry, guys. I just I guess because they played it so much on the radio back in the 70s. It was always on, and you heard it all the time. And I just got tired of it. But I haven't listened to this album in many years, okay? I haven't put it on in years. And I've been listening to it since Pete gave us this uh, assignment. And I got to tell you, I love this album. 
I really do. This is a great album. Uh, Please Don't Judas Me, my favorite song on the album. I think it's the best song on the whole album. It's really great, slow jam. Uh, the heavy jam, driving guitar changes. That's a great song. And of course, you know, Hair of Dog and Miss Misery. But Dan's vocals on here is just, it's unbelievable. The guy was unbelievable. I mean, he really, yeah, really enjoyed this album. Uh, but my, <laughs> the next two are the hardest ones because, you know, some days I can interchange them, but I'm going to have to go with the Scorps as my number two. And I love this album. I got into this a little bit later. You know, the, the first song, uh, Pitch of Life, you know, when I listen to it now, these years later, it kind of reminds me of something that they would have done in the 80s, you know, because a lot of those songs that they did. You know, Yuli made the band different in the 70s, definitely. You know, Matthias coming in later on in the 80s, it changed the band. The sound was definitely changed. But I mean, and I think Todd mentioned Hellcat. I love that jam. I hear Trower. I hear Hendrix. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, the soloing, as somebody else said, the soloing throughout the whole album is great. Uh, especially on Catch a Train. I think uh, Craig mentioned that one too. Great. Everything on here is great. I, I just don't like, and like uh, Ralph said, I don't like the ballads. I'm not a ballad guy, really. I mean, unless I'm listening to Journey or something like, something like that, then I'll, I'll listen to ballads. You know, I, you know, Todd was talking about Yacht Rock. I listen to that too. I mean, I'm 60, going to be 63. So, you know, I listen to a lot of all kinds of music. But that's my number two. And of course, number one is going to be Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie, I, I've loved since the 70s. I actually got this. I got this album after I got, I had, I think I had Paper Money. And then I got this album, if I remember, you know. And uh, yeah, Sammy, I, I love Sammy. I mean, I'm one of those Sammy lovers. I don't, I, 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 I'm not in that Van Halen camp where they fight. Everybody's got to fight, you know. Why can't you love both guys? You know what I mean? It's just, what's, what's the difference? But this album, as everybody's been saying, um, I think every song on here is great. The only song I did, I don't really, I mean, I don't love, I still like it, is the last song. Every every other song, though, Space Station 5 is great. Bad Motor Scooter, that beginning. I remember being young, even before Van, ha Van Halen came out with the first album, this was like, you know, it was different. It was definitely different. I mean, you know, Hendrix had his sound and everything, but this was definitely different. And then all the guys in the band, I mean, you know, because I think about <clears throat> Bill Church, he ended up uh, being with Sammy for a lot of albums. Danny Carmasi, Car he's been on a million albums. Heart, uh, you know, and uh, and then, of course, Gamma, which is one of my favorite bands in the 80s, which I got to see twice. I got to see Ronnie with Gamma and Davey Patterson and those guys. But, uh, yeah, this album for me is number one album for me. It's always been a great album. I'm a guitar guy, and uh, those are my picks. But, you know, they always, they always had interesting song titles and names like that were fun that you're like, wow, oh, I would never even even thought of that. Well, and also the mentality of 1973 too, you know, it was all about the party. I mean, yeah. everything was about the party. So you had lyrics that represented that, you know, right. and that, so you could yeah. hear that song playing in a house, you know, keg party at a house, the place would blow up. You gotcha. know, you know. True. I'm going right. to grab a soft drink real quick. You got it. All right. So Montrose pulls ahead here. We'll see uh, see where I'm going to take us here. So I will start off by saying, as someone who picked the four albums here, uh, I like these all a lot. And I don't think there's a stinker in the bunch here. In fact, uh, I'd argue that all four of these are pretty great albums, and I do love them a lot. But you got to yep. rank somewhere, right? Someone, Something's got to go at number four. Uh, and it pains me to do so, but I'm going to put Budgie at number four. I really love Budgie a lot. I think Budgie are one of the most underrated bands of the 70s. And it's like it's like one of those bands. And I'll admit, I didn't listen to Budgie back in the late 70s and in the 80s. I didn't get into Budgie until probably the 90s. But it's one of those cool bands when you do discover them and you're like, oh, yeah, I've always heard about them. But I only knew the Metallica covers, right? And then you go listen to their catalog and you're like, holy shit, where has this band been all my life? That's Budgie for me. They've yeah. got some of the heaviest riffs of the 70s. I mean, there's some stuff on these early Budgie albums that are as heavy as Black Sabbath. But mm -hmm. what we kind of talked about earlier is that a lot of their early albums, you get like half really heavy songs, then a couple ballads, then maybe a bluesy song, then this like proggy, psychedelic piece. They always had a lot of variety. But man, Tony Borgia, one of the great riff masters of the 70s, 
you know, kind of sucks that uh, Burke Shelley, the bass player, is not getting a lot of love today with his vocals. He's kind of got like this Geddy Lee thing going on, but maybe not quite as forceful. I get it. His vocals are like hit or miss for some people, but uh, I do love this album a lot. I almost picked In for the Kill, which for those of you who are new to Budgie and yeah. maybe you kind of really dug this but want to go further, go check out In for the Kill, which is even heavier than this. Yeah, Jamie's holding it up. That's my favorite Budgie album right there. My original pressing. Oh, nice. wow, nice. Very cool. Oh, actually, very cool. It's a sledgehammer of an album. I have the Maybe. greatest hits of Budgie. That's what I, I actually ended up buying. I have to, you talked about those albums. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So uh, that's my number four. My number three, I'm going to go with Nazareth. Again, love this album. It's probably the best Nazareth album. You can make a case for a couple of others. Uh, Dan Cafferty is just, uh, his vocals are just like if someone took a glass jar and just crumbled it all up and put it down his throat and he grabbed the microphone. There you go. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't care what anybody says. Dan was doing this sort of thing before Brian Johnson came along in ACDC folks or Axl Rose and Guns N' Roses. So if you yeah. want to hear the first guy that kind of sound like sang like that, that's Dan McCafferty. Uh, great bands, bluesy, Scottish heavy rock. I mean, Hair of the Dog and Miss Misery, one, two punch. Doesn't get much better than that. Hair of the Dog is, I mean, Miss Misery is one of the heaviest songs of the 70s. It's like Black Sabbath. It's so simple, so crushing. Beggar's Day, Please Don't Judas Me, Whiskey Drinking Woman. I like the whole thing. It's just really, really good. But it's my number three because the number two and the number one are just that great. Uh, I will say In Trance is going to be my number um, Virgin two. Killer. Virgin and Killer. Virgin He's Killer. Oh, I'm sorry. Virgin Killer. Sorry. Um, Thank you because it's a black album. That's why. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, Virgin Killer uh, was the first Scorpions album I got after I started buying the early 80s stuff. So, like, I got Blackout first, then I got Love Driving Animal Magnetism. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to go investigate the earlier stuff. I actually, I got Tokyo Blades for Tokyo Tapes first. And oh, uh, then I got Virgin Killer. And I think it's a super album. And I think some of their greatest greatest songs of the Uli area are on that. I mean, Polar Nights is one of the greatest guitar extravaganzas ever. And it's even better on the live album. Uli is amazing on this record. Uh, Picture Life. I mean, the whole album is just really, really good. And it's, I think... Uh, I think Todd was mentioning how the music of the Scorpions in the seventies just so different. Like it's heavy, but it's like yeah. Hendrixy because Uli was a big Hendrix fan. He's got that early neoclassical thing going. It's kind of the music's kind of psychedelic and krautradish. It's just really, really different. There was no other band like them at the time. And then I would argue that they became more kind of mainstream and somewhat predictable in the eighties. But that seventies stuff is absolutely amazing. But that's my number two. This was tough, but. I got to go with Montrose because to me, I know Jamie says this sounds a little dated and maybe it does, but it's in a good way. I think that this is just start to finish just one banger track after another short songs, compact riffs, short, tasty solos and the, and those vocals, everything on here is anthemic. I mean, rock the nation, bad motor scooter, rock candy. I mean, I just love it all. I love the promo the production. And I think Ronnie's guitar playing he was never like the flashiest guy, but I think if you want just solid meat and potatoes, American bluesy hard rock slash proto metal, this was really the first album to do that because there was no American bands doing metal or anything as heavy as this at the time. Seventy three, that was all heavy. the Brits can do it. We're going to do it as well. So, that's right. So yeah, that's my number one, and we have a winner. Montrose wins. Nice. Yes. Montrose wins the battle. One, two, three, four, five first place votes to two for the Scorpions, one for Nazareth, and Budgie doesn't get any first place votes. Poor, Poor Budgie. Poor little Budgie. <laughs> a little Budgie. Yeah. But, but with a name like Budgie, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say though, the what, cool that's what the coolest me. logo though, the coolest logo out of everybody in all these bands. It's almost yeah, like the angel cool thing. Logo. You want to turn it upside down and see if it says Budgie. Oh, I love that. Yeah, you'd be disappointed, okay. right? Oh, see wow. if it says see if it says fourth place upside down. Yeah, yeah. I know. Right? <laughs> 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 album covers though, that that's the best one out of all of them. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That's and a really, really that's good a badass album cover. And, and I don't know what's worse, this or Virgin Killer. Virgin Killer is by default the worst, but this this is t uh, awful. When album. they're doing this, I have trouble. Like, yeah. it's like oh god. Hey, but we, we, we've we've seen know. some of those other Scorpions covers where Klaus is wearing like the high tube socks with the stripes, and then some kind of <laughs> like platform heel shoes yeah. and no shirt, and his little Daisy Dukes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
there's some of the stuff of Scorpions, I, you know, 75 with uh, with Uli, where they're at, like in a TV studio. It's great footage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just killer. But Klaus is like dancing around and stuff in his platforms, and it's kind of like cringe moment. <laughs> it's like Halford yeah. in the early 70s, remember? Oh, Halford? God, I know, oh, right? Yeah. 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 Like, blowing rose. And- yeah. I still thought it he was still cool looking though, even back well, then. Well, at the time, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Well, you brought up something I can't remember who did it, but they brought up uh, speaking of the covers of um of the Love Hurts, which is you brought up a point that really that I really resonated with me, and it's something I've thought of a lot, is that when people do covers now, they just redo the song. Yeah. Where for like the perfect example, you know, in the metal thing is Green Man Alishi, mm-hmm. you know. The original Fleetwood Mac version is like nothing like what they did. And it was like when they took it and put their spin on it, they really changed it and completely made it their own. And speaking of Nazareth, when they did this flight tonight, which is a Joan Baez yeah. song, they completely did that. And mm. you don't really hear that anymore, at least not that I'm aware of. And I love that when bands would do that. Take some weird song from a completely other genre and take it somewhere completely different. You know yeah. that that to me was is an art. Priest did it with diamonds and rust as well. That too, diamonds yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 Nazareth, had so, Nazareth had so many covers in the seventies, especially, but but they they um, had a knack for doing like what they did with Love Hurts and picking picking a song and kind of like just turning it on its head and yeah. doing their version of it, which which is really at the end of the day what i'd rather hear it's like i if i want to hear the original you know somebody do the same song i'll listen to the original then i, yeah. I don't want yeah. to you know yeah. if you want to do make it your own then make it your own also yep. like Metallica with the bread fan bread fan they, they they didn't do like that slow part in the middle like they did like a kind of like a little bit of a mosh kind of part to it mm-hmm. i thought they did a really i i think they always did good covers back in the day no. metallica you know, unless you're talking about vocalizations, not to be confused with, like I say, there are singers and there are vocalists, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I love stuff with gutturals, you know, I love, I love, I really like a both. I like a behemoth. Um, after a while, it, it just becomes very linear and because they're not really singing, but there's a vocalization that gives you a certain attitude that you're only going to achieve in that kind of style. But I swear, outside of that kind of style of, of vocals, a, a band, in my opinion, is only as good as its singer. Uh, if or you, drummer. If you, if you take the budgie stuff, everybody loved the music, and the vocals were kind of like the downside of, of what made it probably for, all, for us to go higher, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's people that love that, love that vocal sound. But for yeah. me, I think you take the Nazareth stuff with, with much more simplistic, much more simplistic and the vocals just sell every song. So that's an example where the vocals took much simpler music and totally elevated it, but then much more complex musical uh, songwriting things going on with the budgie stuff. It didn't carry this. It, it didn't carry. It was like, it was, it was as good as that music was, but the singer, in my opinion, kind of kept it a little here. So I, w- I would be curious, what would another, you know, really great singer that we all like a common denominator singer that we all love, how would, what would they do with that music? You mm-hmm. know, how would that elevate it? Now, some might say, well, then it just wouldn't be budge anymore. And that's fine. Like uh, Rush. I, yeah. I love, I love Rush. I, I like Getty Lee's vocals on it, but I know people that just can't stand that sound. And right. I understand why it's very thin. It's it's nasally. It has a, it's it's not for everyone, but you know the warmth of the you know of Dan. You know you, you hear that uh, that stuff, and it just reminds me. It goes back to boy, you can have some great songwriting, but if the singer just isn't really selling it, I don't know. I think it kind of takes it down. Well, that's why Dio you know, was so great. Dio, Dio yeah. could just sing anything and just anything make it sound. He was so good. He's you can sing in a phone book. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, yeah. so anyway, yeah. That was fun. It's so many bands to listen to today. You don't want to you don't want to spend time trying to like a band. If it, you got a million bands out there you can listen to. Yeah, so you move on vocals to are so important. If you can't get past the vocals right away, that's it. You go on to the next band. 
I think right. so. Yeah. Well, and when it and comes to making covers your own, Queensryche did a cover of Scarborough Fair. I love that. And made it their own. Love that. <laughs> B-side. Yep. Yeah. I have that. I love that. That is. Oh, I that. like the cover that Todd did. Rebel Yell. I actually like that. That was good. So yeah. we so we did that. But you know when we when we did that, I w we we talked about you know do we do we how like we call it Reichify whenever we talk about you know Reichify Reich it up you know we were like do we wanna I was like man I think some things you just shouldn't mess with and. If we start trying to do make it too Queens Reiki and like out there and so if we I said I'm gonna sing it really kind of like Billy Idol sings it, which is in my wheelhouse because you know I that's so comfortable for me. It's not low singing. That's normal for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think some of the guitar soloing that Stony did because Stony played the guitars on that song. Um, you know, um, you know it wasn't exact. Uh, but we took like the the laser gun sound that Steve Stevens used, and you know we we kept it pretty true. But there are there are some covers where I was like I I I don't want to hear them change too much. I just I just like the cover and want to hear it done well. But then there are other things where I've heard covers totally redone, and I'm like, wow, I didn't think I would like that as much as I do, but I really do when it takes a life of its own. But when it's not even recognizable to me, it's like I don't know. I don't like when something it has to be really, really good. Uh, but if it doesn't sound close enough to the original where I wouldn't even know that that's it, you know, sometimes I don't know. Yeah. I like that's when I hear a, cover. a case to be made for both sides. And yeah, I, I do appreciate both sides. I think for me, if I hear if I hear a song and let's say I, I you know, I get the CD and I, I didn't really look at the names of the tracks or whatever, and I pop it in and then all of a sudden a song comes on and I'm like, Oh, this is kind of cool. Wait a second. Right. Oh, that song, that's kind of neat. You know, it's like yeah. you didn't catch it at first, but then yeah. something in there grabs you and you're like, oh, sure. now I know what it is. That's kind of cool, I think. You, you know, know what song? Mean? Hey, Pete, you know what song that's been redone so many times in the last few years? Bridge of Size. I've heard yes, it. Yes, everybody's doing Bridge of Size now. I still I love even, what is that? Open, what is that? Robin Trout. Robin Trout. Robin Trout. Yeah. You've heard it on classic rock, I bet. You've heard it. You've heard probably. It. Yeah. You've heard it, you just probably don't know it. Yeah. Exactly. If I heard it, yeah, I would the title, I don't know, but if I heard the song, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, like, Opeth Opeth just did it. Uh, yeah. uh Steve Lukather just did it on his last album. Did he really? And Wilson yeah. did it on her style album. I saw when I saw Ann Wilson, she she did Bridge of Size and that's, wow. right. she, 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 that's one of those did. records that I go back to that same same school year with Montrose and Bridge of Size, you know, yeah. just listening to those records, just you know, taking a bong hit and listening, going, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> just like going, I'm gonna do that when I grow up. You yeah. know, Bridge of Size was one of those records, and I still listen to it regularly to this day. It's just is that the is that the, the title track or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I, I'm putting it in YouTube really fast. Yeah. Bridge of what? I'm not holding up. There's God. the new box set. <laughs> Bridge what of is size. It? That's the box set, yeah. Of of what? S I G H S. Oh, size. Bridge Robert Trower. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we gotta get you to I'm sorry, guys. I know. We got the youngster here. So <laughs> you might know the guitar right when it starts. Yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll recognize yeah, it. You'll, you'll know once you hear it. Or uh, Pete, Pete, like uh, Fu Manchu recently did a cover of uh, Taking It to the Streets by Doobie Brothers. And, <laughs> and, it's, and it sounds like it's from outer space. I mean, oh, I love it, Fu Manchu. It's like you, you would not know it's like that, that it's the same song. I mean, it's it's completely different so yeah so there's like like todd said it goes it goes in both directions yeah. the first time i saw queens in 1995 on promised land tour i was slam dancing to typo negative the opening band covering summer breeze wasted with a bottle of apple shock in my hand that i smuggled in that that schnapps that they used to make. I haven't even heard the term slam dance in <laughs> two decades. I know. It's so 95. I know. But that's what we were trying to do. <laughs> I first seen Queensryche uh, when Todd was only 10 years old. When they opened up for <laughs> Kiss on Animal Eyes. And wow. I first seen Metal Church when they opened up for Metallica on the Master of Puppets tour. Right. Got to see David Wayne killing it and uh oh, yeah. and me and pete reviewed your the metal church book and that was a great oh, book right on. cool 
Oh, I love metal church. <laughs> you know, I suck. Here, 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 here's that'd be a great tour. One of my prized, yeah, it's one been of brought my up. prized possessions is when I did. I was so honored and thankful and fortunate enough to do a uh, fake healer with Mike, Kurt, and the guys, <laughs> and with Mike. And Mike picked me up from the airport. And you know, when I was in high school, I mean. Mike, like, you know, we had the short bangs and the long hair and, you know, like that was that that was the style. I still love it when I look back and see that. And he had Mike Howe had the coolest hair. And here's this guy picking me up at the airport. And we did a nice road trip to uh, to go to where the video shoot was. I don't know. It was a couple hour drive or something. I've done it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it was the most memorable experience. And after the video shoot, um. I said to Jeff Plate, I said, hey, will you do me a big favor? Can you take the snare drum head off that we just shot this video on and get, can I get everybody to like sign it for me? Cause I'm, you know, such a huge metal. So he's like, he was like, well, I can get your head. I go, no, no, no. I want the one from the video. I want the one right on that <laughs> snare drum. I said, I'll buy you another head. I don't care. <laughs> and so he took it off. Everyone wrote something really nice and sweet to me and signed it. It's in my studio. And then years later, so if you remember when Mike rejoined the band and they had they did like a EPK, the re kind of this new chapter with Mike Howe, and they had these 100 anniversary Gibson Explorers that had all the metal church graphics and everything on it. And and there's there's Kurt, you know, he's got one and Rick's got one. And. I said to to uh joe who owns rat pack records and i was like hey i go where are those guitars at he's like well, I, I have them i was like dude yeah, oh you got a straight answer from him hold on i, didn't. I have one of those guitars in my studio <laughs> so you listen sick. to this <laughs> <laughs> you want it no you so, have it so listen i said dude he goes, do you know how many thousands of dollars I've been offered for this thing? I go, he goes, there's only two that were ever made. And I go, I go, you have them both? I go, Kurt doesn't have them? He goes, he goes, no. He, and they did this whole video shoot with everything. And I, every once in a while, I go, dude, you know, I, I want, I want one of those guitars. I would just be up his ass for one of those guitars for a long time. And so finally one day something happened. And, and he was like, I go, dude, I go, for, just for that, you ought to send me that guitar. And he's like, you know what? I I'm going to give you the guitar. And I was like, yeah, right. No nice. shit. He shipped that guitar to my house. That's and then cool. a lot of time went back and I, I just looked at it and I was like, this is the guitar, you know? And... <laughs> and and I played like the beginning of like metal church, metal church, you know, <laughs> you know, and I'm playing it on it. And then. And you Mike, burst into flames. I had talked to Mike on the phone. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I talked to Mike on the phone about something because you know, we would keep in touch. And then at some point he called Mike called Joe and he's like, he wanted the guitar and he goes, I gave it to Todd and he goes, ah, he's a bigger fan than I am. He can have it. That, and yeah. that, that was Mike. That was right. Mike. Yeah, totally Mike. Yeah. Mike, Mike was just the sweetest guy in the world. And I didn't know him for a long, long time, but for the years that I knew him, uh, I really grew to like him as the human being. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I was so thankful to Kurt for, for letting me be a part of that. Oh no! I don't, we were I don't think that had ever been done before. Having mm -hmm. another singer that wasn't the singer of the band do something like that. No, so that was great. great. That's we, my we, that's we my uh, my mm -hmm. my fanning to to my friend Kurt and Metal Church and and that I have this guitar and one we do another show, Pete. I'll 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 show you the guitar. It's awesome. <laughs> that's and, cool. I feel better cool. knowing that you, that you have one of them. Dude, no, it's, it's not like, okay. It, good. I didn't some, want you know somebody else to like don't even if know. If somebody it. offered me 50k right now, I wouldn't sell it. It's my guitar and it's not yeah. it's 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 gonna go, it's you know that's awesome. I, I would yeah, it's, that's something I would just not part with unless you wanted it, you're the only person. Even if Joe wanted it back, he ain't getting it back. <laughs> nah. 
Joe can't have it. He's got the other one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was really nice to to meet some of the other people here that I that I mm -hmm. didn't know. Um, so thank I you, love this channel. Stephen and Ralph. You know, I know you guys. Um, I watch like have a turn. beer or something. I feel like we're just I'm happen. having a I'm having a Czech cola. Oh, <laughs> Czech cola. What is that? It's just like it's like a generic Coke. Oh, like definitely. Shasta or something. That's my one thing. I've never been drunk in my life. I don't drink, um, but sometimes I like to have a, a Coke. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. Anyway. So before we let everybody go, uh, Kurt um, and Todd, uh, real quick, what's uh, on your agenda for like new albums, songwriting shows, all that sort of thing? Kurt, what's going on with Metal Church? Uh, finish, the, finish the new Presto album, and that'll be out after the first of the year, which is a double concept prog extravaganza the obligatory double concept album that'll be out after the first of the year and uh yeah that uh that's out and we would love to play some shows and um, the hall of flame my my attempt at montrose's first album and the cult you know that band started when the cult sonic temple came out so when i saw your shirt it was like that was one of those important records too you know and um so yeah, I've got that going and uh, doing some just doing some writing right now. Um, got a couple of things brewing that really I don't know. Yeah, I'm up to my neck in it <laughs> with some new records and stuff. So that's great. And there's some stuff coming out first of the year and be doing a lot of writing between now and the holidays. So cool. Well, hopefully the next cool. time Metal Church comes around to this area, it won't be in like 120 degree heat in uh, <laughs> like like the chance show that you guys played at a year and a half ago. Rob Lasante yeah. and Chris Allen, myself, we all almost melted away. I would look up on the stage and there's Kurt on the side of the stage, like looking like you were ready to just pass out. I mean, oh, was, dude. Yeah. I mean, awful. the back was having trouble, but in the, the heat, like, you know, it's just like, no, this is. I'm too old for this shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it was it was good. So well, one of these days, yeah. one of these days, we were, you know, we got to put together a, a metal church Queensrÿche tour. Oh, and dude, we, totally. We, we, yeah. We've talked, we've talked about it, you know, but for for various reasons, it just hasn't happened yet. But uh, that would be something that I think uh, the you know fans of of both bands would would totally appreciate. And oh, dig. absolutely. You know, yeah. they're they're mm -hmm. different, but still kind of under that umbrella and. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And the um, Northwest connection and all that kind of stuff too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So as far as what I'm doing, I'm, I'm working on my second solo record and uh, we're starting, we're starting to talk about writing sessions for the next Queensryche album. And I think we're going to try to get together either December or January to start all get in the same room and see what we can come up with. Um, and then we have a second leg of the Origins tour happening in the U.S. That starts, uh, the tour bus rolls out of Tampa uh, October 7th. So a week from from this is being uh, recorded uh, is when I leave for five weeks. And then um, we may have a few fly dates from November 18th through the rest of the year, maybe. I think most of December will be off in January and then uh february we'll kick back up and go to europe it'll be the first time we've been to europe since november of 2019 wow. um so we're going to do the origins tour over there and hopefully they dig it and that's pretty much it and then we have a bunch of you know other stuff happening in the works but um yeah that's what's going on with me and with the band and my solo stuff so yeah always always busy always busy cool Sounds yeah good. And yeah, uh, please show off that shirt one more time, Todd. Yeah. So yeah. everyone check this shirt out. Where can they get where can they get this, Pete? The link will be below. We got the Sea of Tranquility merch page. So go check it out. There's like 15 or 20 different designs, all sorts of stuff. That's one of our metal shirts. And this is a them. this is like a cool, I don't know, blood red, like a deep, dark blood red burgundy. And I just I just love this shirt. And then I have another cool one. It, it's I don't have it here, but um it's a it's black. And it's it's like multicolored. It's really really nice. This is like a good, you know, pretty thin shirt. So it's not like it's not like the real stiff kind of gilded shirts that you don't want to wear because they're like really starchy and shitty feeling. This feels very comfortable and light. And I live here in Florida where it's hot as hell. 
I'm going to be wearing this on the Origins Tour on stage because it looks badass. Hey. And I appreciate uh, Pete Pardo here for, for uh, you know, asking me to be a part of the show. And, You're welcome, Tom. And, and uh, you. you know, I, I enjoy doing these kinds of things from time to time. It's not something I ever really get to do. So when you when you ask me, you know, I, I always try to oblige if possible. But, yeah, this is my new Sea of Tranquility shirt, and it says, play it fast, play it loud. It's pretty badass. There you go. Very cool. Yep. So, so look out for more stuff, music, and live stuff from these two gentlemen here and their respective bands and projects. And uh, this is on the web at www.seeatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Montrose is our winner today in the album war. Rank them as you like them down in the comments below. And we'll see you next time here on the Hudson Valley Squares. For Count Ralphus, Steve Keeler, Rob Lasante, Craig Kaminsky, Jamie Laszlo, Todd Latore, and Kurt Vanderhoof, I'm Pete Pardo. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.